Right now in America, almost every tire changed, every road driven, every playground built is contributing to decades worth of coho salmon dying. It's one of the top five like most toxic chemicals to aquatic organisms that people have ever reported. 6-PPD quinone is a toxin produced when the common tire preservative 6-PPD mixes with oxygen. As tires age, the rubber starts to peel off, leaving bits and pieces in their path. When it rains, anything that doesn't soak into soil becomes stormwater pollution, eventually ending up in local waterways where every fall, coho salmon return to spawn. They're literally soaking up this chemical that's interfering with how their brains work, and then they're dying before they can get to that next part of the, the creek in order to, to lay their eggs. Sean Dixon is the executive director of Puget Soundkeeper Alliance. With the help of hundreds of volunteers, they've been tracking declining coho salmon populations. <laughs> First, bringing their data to the University of Washington, Tacoma, where scientist Ed Kaloje and his team worked to narrow down the thousands of chemicals found in stormwater pollution to one. I think literally it was December 12th, 2019. Jenny was like, hey, I think I know what it is. We're just, we're just trying to size sort this Chinook. The team brought a sample to Jen McIntyre over at Washington State University in Puyallup, where 6-PPD quinone was put to the test. The fish would start to come to the surface of the water. They'd start swimming at the surface of the water. They'd start to lose equilibrium and swim on their sides and upside down and eventually settle to the bottom of the tank and, and die. Scientists call the discovery a career-defining moment. Relief and excitement. Pointing to the critical role coho play in maintaining healthy freshwater ecosystems. But the excitement soon faded with the question, now that we know what's killing them, what do we do about it? It's one to two percent by weight of every tire on the planet that's been made for 60 years. The U.S. Tire Manufacturers Association addresses 6PPD on its website, saying in part the chemical adds to driver safety and that more research is needed. But even if they stopped using the chemical, advocates say it could be decades before 6PPD is completely eradicated. We have to be walking and chewing gum at the same time. Data from WSU shows that when stormwater pollution goes through green infrastructure, like a rain garden, it filters the chemical out. Yeah. Sean and his team are now fighting for more green treatment solutions near urban creeks, pointing to permits that direct how cities and states handle new toxins in stormwater. The permits today, under the law today, say if you've got a problem, start figuring out how to solve it. Puget Soundkeeper sent intent to sue notices to five cities, including Seattle, Burien, Mukilteo, SeaTac, and Normandy Park, for not complying with permits. But Sean says the goal is to work with cities, understanding that solutions are expensive. These folks know that this is a problem, want to help solve it, but this is one issue among many for, for most of these towns. The hope now is for a stronger response from the state. A petition was sent to the Washington State Department of Ecology asking for more action near Longfellow Creek in West Seattle, which has seen pre-spawn mortality rates nearing 90 percent. A response from the state was filed saying in part, the science is clearly making a case that 6-PPD quinone kills. At this time, we do not believe that a site-specific adaptive management effort is the most appropriate or necessary response. And so if the community hears a little bit about it. I asked they... Jeff Kilalea, who works with the Department of Ecology, for more context. Is there a reason why, if we know that there are certain creeks that are being targeted, that the state is rejecting site-specific solutions? This problem, on the other hand, is widespread and ubiquitous throughout the Pacific Northwest. He says they're figuring out how to best use funds received from the legislature to address multiple sites and researching ways to ensure solutions put in place today are effective in the long term. Certainly agree that actions are required uh, to address and install treatment where it's needed. We only disagree on, on the timing and the mechanisms for that treatment. But it's time, Sean says, that poses the greatest risk. That's something that our salmon can't handle. That's something that our tribal communities don't deserve. That's something that our communities uh, can't wait for. Sean told me it's his hope that Puget Sound is the place where 6PPD was discovered and the place where the problem is solved. For now, reporting here in Seattle, Angela Cockaday, 
King 5 News.